We're back here at the Chickasha Field Day with our OSU Extension Weed Specialist, Dr. Liberty Galvin. And Liberty, you just came aboard OSU. So first, yes. tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Curtis, for having me. Um, so I actually was born and raised here in Oklahoma. Uh, I grew up in northeastern Oklahoma, did my undergrad at Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. Um, afterwards, I did a lot of my graduate education at UC Davis, um, but just moved back last fall to start this job. Uh, I, my specialty is small grains, but I'm kind of doing a little bit wherever the need presents itself, you know, but I'm happy to be here at the Forge's Sweet Field Day today. Well, we're happy to have you aboard and there's always a need when it comes to weeds. So first off, let's talk a little bit about what your talk here at the, the Field Day was about. Yeah, so, um, you know, there's a lot of reports across the state about herbicide resistance issues and uh, Dr. Shrestha, my colleague and I are really trying to understand um, how bad is the resistance, so how many modes of action have we lost for those weeds, um, but also how widespread across the state is the issue. I think a lot of people get really shocked when they see how many weeds mm have resistance to the herbicides that we have available in the state. Yeah, because so, they might be using those herbicides on just not even knowing that's not effective. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of growers, I think, are aware that they're ineffective, but they're kind of running out of options. So it was uh, important to connect with growers on that piece today. So what kind of questions were you uh, fielding from growers here today? Well, we are really looking for buy-in for our scouting program. Yeah. There was a couple of folks that came up to me and said, hey, I, you know, I'm confident I have herbicide resistant Italian ryegrass mm -hmm. in my field. Yeah. I've been spraying it all season, nothing's happening to it. Um, so that was a big thing. Another piece is uh, because these herbicides aren't working, we're really looking at what our non-chemical control options are. Um, and kind of part of my talk today was fishing to see what growers might be interested in, if people have already tested some of these strategies. Um, so that was also very helpful at this uh, um, at this field day. So shifting, you know, just in general with weeds, you know, it's we've had some warmer days and good moisture, thankfully, yeah. but at the end of the day, that's, you know, wheat likes that, but so does weeds. So do the weeds, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the biggest complaint that we hear across the state from wheat growers specifically is Italian ryegrass. Um, we also focus a lot on our bromus species, so our true cheat, um, cheat, rescue grass, and even some of the um, bromus species that are planted for forages. You oh, know, yeah. ryegrass is planted as a forage, and now we're kind of seeing some of those species creep over into our wheat fields, which sometimes have a dual purpose. They're grazed mm -hmm. for cattle in the fall. Um, hopefully you can get a good wheat crop of, off of it in the spring. But because of this intersection between grazing and wheat production, yeah. we're seeing this really interesting um, field level eco ecology and what type of weeds we're seeing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when it comes to management, you were, as you just mentioned, you know, it's kind of a struggle when it's coming to manage those. So yeah. what are your recommendations for this time of year in this you know, environment? Oh, it's so, so honestly, this time of year, if you've got weeds, there's not a lot of mm -hmm. options. Um, some things we are looking at for the future though, I have a grad student who um, has a wildland firefighting background. Mm -hmm. um, he's a natural resource ecology management undergrad. He's going to start a grad program with me next January and we're looking at using fire as a potential um, control tool for herbicide resistant weeds. Um, now that that doesn't work for everybody because of their proximity to a highway yeah, right. or their proximity to an airport um, crop rotation. It There's not a lot of winter crops because our big issue are our winter annual weeds. Yeah. So you have to have a diverse winter annual crop to rotate with. So probably going to be looking at canola, um, maybe some alfalfa. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, we want to make sure that growers aren't missing out on that forage opportunity, the growers that do grow wheat for forage. Um, so fire, crop rotation, 
And I also, I was fishing a little bit today and some growers seem um, amicable to the idea of a post-harvest seed crusher. Oh, okay. And a seed crusher is essentially a gigantic grinder that will crush any seed that's left over in the chaff. Oh, okay, yeah. So it doesn't necessarily address the seed bank issues, but it will prevent any more weed seeds from being deposited into the seed bank. Mm. Um, so a couple of non-chemical options that we sort of have on the table, uh, and now that I've gauged um, the interest from growers, I think that those control options need to be on the table uh, for me research-wise over the next couple of years. And honestly, I'm really excited about that. Well, we look forward to seeing what that research project holds, and we're happy to have you aboard, Liberty. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Liberty Galvin, OSU Extension Weed Specialist here at Oklahoma State University.